This weekend in particular, I had been on a short trip with my friends. We went to this, to this really beautiful beach, you know, and we spent most of our day just playing in the water and lazing around. It was all going well until I found out that I had forgotten to pack an extra pair of clothes. So, has something similar ever happened to you? I mean, have you ever gone on a trip and then conveniently discovered that you've forgotten to pack a few things that you very much need or that you just couldn't find them easily at the time when you needed them the most? Hold on to that thought for a while, okay? We're gonna read a hilarious story called Packing written by Jerome K. Jerome. Now, Jerome K. Jerome was born on the 2nd of May, 1859. It was with his next two books that he really achieved success. They were titled The Idle Thoughts of an Idle Fellow and one of my favorites, Three Men in a Boat. His other works include Three Men on the Bummel and Paul Kelver, which is basically an autobiographical novel by itself. He also wrote a number of plays, a book of Jerome's memoirs called My Life and Times, which was published in 1926. We will be reading Packing, and that is an extract from Jerome K. Jerome's novel, Three Men in a Boat. I said I'd pack. I'd rather pride myself on my packing. Packing is one of those many things that I feel I know more about than any other person living. It surprises me myself sometimes how many such things there are. I impressed the fact upon George and Harris and told them that they had better leave the whole matter entirely to me. They fell into the suggestion with a readiness that had something uncanny about it. George spread himself over the easy chair and Harris cocked his legs on the table. This was hardly what I intended. What I had meant, of course, was that I should boss the job and that Harris and George should potter about under my directions. I pushing them aside every now and then with, oh you, here, let me do it. There you are, simple enough. Really teaching them, as you might say. Their taking it in the way they did irritated me. There is nothing that irritates me more than seeing other people sitting about doing nothing when I am working. I lived with a man once who used to make me mad that way. He would loll on the sofa and watch me doing things by the hour together. He said it did him real good to look on at me messing about. Now I'm not like that. I can't sit still and see another man slaving and working. I want to get up and superintend and walk around with my hands in my pockets and tell him what to do. It is my energetic nature. I can't help it. What do you think? Will George and Harris also fumble like the narrator did? Let's find out when we read the next part of the story. But we have a few more words that we need to discover before we move on. The first phrase that we are going to discover here is impressed upon which means to make someone understand or be familiar with the importance or value of something. The next word is uncanny, and it refers to something that is strange or mysterious in an unsettling way. Then we have the word intended, which means to plan or mean. After that, we have the word boss, which means to give orders in a domineering manner. The next word on the list is potter which means to move around without hurrying, in a relaxed way, basically. Now, the word lol means to sit, lie, or just stand in a lazy, relaxed way. And up next, we have the word superintend, which means to be responsible for the management or the arrangement of something. We have the word haunts. Haunts means to keep thinking or worrying about something over a long period of time. Tutimate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.